Characteristics of Electricity Lesson 8, EcoHealth Project Information, the final wrap-up project for this unit. The overall goal. It addresses the importance of the spiritual beliefs of all people, including Canada's First Nations people. It shows respect towards our environment and designed to minimize the impact our choices will have on the next seven generations. It is believed in many First Nations cultures in Canada that when we make decisions, we must consider how those decisions will affect the next seven generations. And hopefully, seven generations ago, when people were making decisions, they were considering how those decisions would impact us today. This means the following. Our house must be sensitive to the environment, the animals and plants that already live in the area. And number two, it reduces current energy consumption does better at conserving than we are doing now. So when we look at construction of the house, we want to try to find ways to save water. We want to reduce heating costs, so that means we're using less natural gas. We want to reduce electricity use, so SAS power has to burn less coal. We want to produce less garbage. We want to reuse and recycle so that fewer resources are used. We want to reduce consumption. We want to reduce what we're purchasing so fewer things have to be manufactured and thus fewer resources are used and we also end up making less garbage. This project will have to be sent back to me once completed and I will be able to mark what was put in the presentation. This means you need the following. You need to make a model. It's not going to be made out of cardboard. It's going to have to be something that can be projected onto the screen. So your model must be made by you. Stealing a plan from the internet will be considered plagiarism and you will receive a zero. You can use Floor Planner to make it, which is a free online software program. And the URL is near the end of this presentation. Or you can make your house by drawing different shapes in PowerPoint. There will be an example later in the presentation when I show you my house, and that is exactly what I did. I just used shapes in PowerPoint to show you where things are located. You need a PowerPoint, and the project is based on a minimum of 10 points under each topic heading. The PowerPoint should be organized so that each element of your design is identified, and it clearly explains to the class as to why you included this element. What is the environmentally friendly advantage to having this element in your house? Here is your first example of a PowerPoint slide. I wanted to put a rain barrel in my yard, so this is what my slide would look like. I have the title yard at the top, and then the specific thing that I'm putting in my yard is a rain barrel. And then I have the explanation. They help collect rainwater used in the garden, so less energy has to go into treating water and pumping it to the house. I also included, and every slide should have a picture, I included a picture of a rain barrel. This is one I took myself. There's my rain barrel. Uh, of course, you will probably just go online and lift graphics from the internet. You should have a PowerPoint slide for each item. They should also be organized so all categories are covered at one time. So you present all the house layout points together, then you present all the yard points together. You should start by researching all the things that you want to include, probably 12 items per topic. I suggest that you brainstorm with your parents because they are homeowners and they have all sorts of ideas that you might be able to use. This is not a slide that I would use in the presentation, but this gives you an idea of what my house currently looks like. The water heater is the yellow circle on the left. The blue square at the top is my shower. The blue oval to the right, that's my bathtub. And the blue rectangle to the right, that is the kitchen sink. Every time that I need hot water, one of those places, I have to turn the water on and let it run a couple minutes before I get hot water which means I waste a lot of water. This is a picture of what a slide in my presentation would look like. House layout, 
the title of the section I'm currently in. What I'm talking about is the location of the water heater. I have my explanation at the bottom. The water heater would be situated close to all the items that may require hot water. So when hot water is needed, less water needs to be run before hot water reaches the tap. This saves water. We're using less treated water and create less water that will need to be treated. Let's start by looking at each of the areas that you will be doing research in when you produce your project. The first is house layout. 10 points that show your house has been designed to be environmentally friendly and those points are explained to the class. This is where students always lose the most marks. When presenting the house layout, they repeat all the items they had in the PowerPoint. They have already gotten marks for those aspects. You need to focus on the house layout. But what I mean is, an example, some people may say, I want to have cork flooring. So they have that inside of materials. But then when they show the house layout, they say this is where the cork flooring is. That's not worth marks. You have to have a, we put it here, and since we put it here, this is the best spot for it, and it is going to cause our house to be more environmentally friendly. So the bullet points hopefully give you an idea of what I mean by location and house layout. Why you put rooms where you put them. What rooms do you want on the south side of your house, which are on the north, which are on the west or east, and explain why. Rooms that are multi-purposed and why. Because we want to use fewer materials. If we can multi-purpose a room, it will cause us to use fewer materials. Rooms your house will either have or not have and why. There might be certain rooms you could add to your house which would require materials to build, but in the long term, they will help you save energy. The direction the house faces. Where you decide to build, top of the hill, in the valley, north side of the hill, or south side of the hill. Where things will be situated in the yard, such as vegetation and structures. Where's your garden going to go if you have a garden, or a greenhouse, or tool shed? Where are you going to plant trees? If you Say I'm going to plant a row of deciduous, which are leafy trees, along one side of your house. If you can explain why planting them there would be environmentally good for your house and help you save energy, then it's worth marks. How do houses differ? You must include 10 points that outline how the layout will be environmentally friendly. Think location, location, location. Look at some houses and determine how they differ. What do some houses have that other houses don't have? What is better for the environment, building down or building up? Do you want a basement or a second story, or do you want both? It is then up to you to select a style and defend why that style is more environmentally friendly. The second category we will talk about is the yard. You want 10 to 12 points that show your yard has been designed to be environmentally friendly, and those points are explained to the class. This may also include items or tools that you will use to maintain your yard. The third category is furnishings. You want 10 points that show your house has been furnished with environmentally friendly items, and you have to explain what makes these items environmentally friendly. Furnishings often get confused with materials. Furnishings are the things that go inside of moving vans. So you don't put your windows in a moving van. You don't put your flooring in a moving van. You gotta think of the items in your house, like your TV or oven or fridge or Chesterfield or pillows or picture frames, whatever it is, the things that you would wrap up in boxes and stick into a moving truck are what would go inside of this category. Materials are the things used to construct the house. That's framing and foundation, that's flooring and paint. And then you have to explain with each one of those again why you chose it. What is the environmentally friendly reason for choosing those materials? Heat, power, and water. 10 points that show your house has been constructed to minimize the amount of energy that goes into heating, decreasing the amount of energy being taken off the SAS power grid, and minimizes the water usage of the people who live in the house. Let's say in my yard section, I've got 15 or 16 items. 
I could have moved rain barrels into this topic because it applies to both areas. I wouldn't use it twice. I would just have to be selective as to which topic heading I would like to place it under. Likewise, you might find your heat power and water section winds up with like 17 items. So you may be able to move some of those items out of this section and put it into maybe materials or into furnishings. This is one of my favorites because this topic heading was made up by students just like you a few years ago. They said, why don't we have a topic where we can pick out things that people could do inside the house to lessen their impact on the environment? An example would be like turning off the lights when you're not in a room. And then the reason why, of course, would be that we use less electricity, so SAS power has to burn less coal. The house has to be in the valley of Lumsden, either on one of the hills or on the side of the hills or in the valley. In the past, I've had people try to pitch the idea of living on the beaches in Belize, so they would sleep on a hammock strung between two trees and eat coconuts all day. That is too easy. Your house will be here in the valley. As earlier mentioned, students often use www.floorplanner.com. On the site, you will find a tutorial as well. After you watch the tutorial, start your house. Draw a few walls, exit, and then reopen the program to make sure that what you have done is properly saving. So many times I've had students spend hours building a house, then they think they've saved it properly, and they close the program, and when they reopen it, they find they've lost all their work. So again, open it up, watch a tutorial, draw a few walls, save, shut everything down, reopen it, and make sure that you can recover the work that you had saved. And that's it. Best of luck. Hope to see you guys soon.